Why tiny microorganisms matter? Are you aware of their uses in biopesticides? Let's learn how they can produce biopesticides. What are tiny microorganisms? Microorganisms are tiny living things that exist around us, but cannot be seen with our naked eyes since they are too small to be seen. They live in water, soil, and also in the air. The term microorganisms actually refers to a range of organisms. For example, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae, and viruses. There are bad and good microbes. We often think that microbes are bad for our health. However, without us realizing it, some are important and give many benefits for us. Microorganisms can be used to produce various types of products, such as medicine, dairy products, and many of them even live on or in our bodies and help us to stay healthy. They have also been introduced in biotechnology, and also been used as biopesticides. As in this video, I will focus on the biopesticides that are beneficial for farmers' use onto their crops. Biopesticides are naturally occurring substances for controlling pests by non-toxic mechanisms. Therefore, it is an eco-friendly alternative to chemical pesticides, which are safer to the environment and to human health. Biopesticides are certain types of pesticides derived from natural materials such as plants, microorganisms, animals, and certain minerals. They are divided into three classes, which include microbial pesticides, plant-incorporated protectants, and biochemical pesticides. In this video, we will focus on the mechanism of microbial pesticide. Microbial pesticides consist of a microorganism. It can be a bacterium, fungus, or virus as the active ingredient. Microbial pesticides can control many different kinds of pests, and each active ingredient is relatively specific for its target pests. The most widely used microbial pesticides are subspecies and strains of Bacillus thuringiensis. It is a rod-shaped, gram-positive bacterium. It is a soil-dwelling bacterium that naturally produces a toxin that is fatal to certain herbivorous insects. The toxin produced by Bacillus thuringiensis has been used as an biopesticide spray, and is commonly used in organic farming. Now, let's take a look at experience of a farmer using biopesticides onto his crops. In a small village, there lived a man named Ali. He was a farmer, and he had his own farm. He cultivated his crops in his farm for a living. He was very delighted as he had planted his farm with the best of seeds. Moreover, he also used chemical pesticides to protect his crops from the pests. He was very satisfied to see the success of his crops. However, over the long run, he noticed that the pesticides do not only kills the pests, but also kills the beneficial insect species such as worms, that help to maintain the soil. Thus, the quality and quantity of the crop's yield is declined. Little did he know, continuous usage of chemical pesticide, day by day, has exposed him to the toxic chemicals in the pesticide. Due to its toxicity, Ali had been having dizziness and coughing all day. One day, Ali went to the farmer's market. He was walking around the market until he saw a biopesticide stall. He was intrigued and decided to check out the stall as he had never heard of biopesticide before. The seller explained the reason why biopesticides are better than chemical pesticides. Now, let's see the advantages of biopesticides. Biopesticides are highly specific to target pests. Once they are sprayed onto the crops, they would only kill the targets, such as caterpillars. They do not affect beneficial insect species, such as earthworms, that are present in the soil. Biopesticides are also non-toxic, compared to chemical pesticide, as they are mainly produced from natural sources. Hence, biopesticide would not cause harm to non-target organisms, such as animals and humans. In addition, biopesticides are eco-friendly, which means, they are safe for the environment. Most biopesticides are biodegradable. They leave no residues in the surrounding, hence, does not pollute the earth. After listening to the explanation, from the seller, Ali thought, biopesticide can be a good option, to replace chemical pesticide. Therefore, he decided to buy one. After Ali bought the biopesticide from the market, he started using the biopesticides on his crops. 
He also hopes that this biopesticide can give him positive feedback. Then, after 48 hours, Ali saw that the insects were dead. Ali was very satisfied with the effectiveness of biopesticides on his crops. But, do you know how these biopesticides are produced? Now, let's learn the production of biopesticides. First step is isolation and screening of Bacillus thuringiensis. Bacillus thuringiensis was isolated from the soil sample. The diluted sample then cultured on nutrient agar. In order to give the spores chance to germinate on media, with adequate nutrients and at optimal temperature. Second step is fermentation. Production of biopesticides compounds was conducted using submerged fermentation method. This method allows biomolecules in which enzymes and other reactive compounds are submerged in a liquid, such as nutrient broth. The fermentation process started by inoculating a small amount of a Bacillus thuringiensis colony that grown on a nutrient agar slant into conical flask that contain nutrient broth and then incubated overnight. After that, this activated Bacillus thuringiensis was then inoculated into conical flask containing medium with desired moisture content and incubated at for at least four days until sporulation had occurred. During the fermentation, bacterial spores and crystalline toxins will be produced these can cause the insect's death within 48 hours because of the blood poisoning as spores proliferate in its blood. The next step is formulation. Due to differences in environmental conditions, biopesticides are formulated in different forms, including dry formulation and liquid formulation. The dry products are including wettable powders, dusts, and granules. Then, for liquid products are includes cell suspensions in water, oils, and emulsions. This step also involves adding the inert ingredients, such as surfactants, antifreeze compounds, additional nutrients and coloring agents. These inerts ingredients contribute to improving product performance by optimizing contact to leaf, soil and insect surfaces, by reducing desiccation, increasing shelf life or increasing solubility in water. The last step is packaging. Biopesticides are properly packaged with the correct labeling for marketing. Later, biopesticides will be brought to market. Let's go back to Ali's story. A few weeks passed since he started using biopesticides. Ali's farm had grown healthier without the presence of pests. He had totally discarded the use of chemical pesticides in his farm after he personally experienced the benefits of biopesticides. As a result, other farmers were fascinated with his farm. They wanted to know how he grown his crops productively without pests. Therefore, Ali shared his experience as he wished more people would be able to learn about biopesticides. To sum up, bioprocess is an essential component for the transition of bioproducts from laboratory to a manufacturing scale to provide the benefits of biotechnology in agricultural field. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.